Today on Pinball Workshop, we're going to cover one of my favorite tools. It's also one of the most expensive tools that I've purchased during the time that I've been working on pinball repair restoration videos. And that's going to be the Heiko FR300 desoldering gun with magic unicorns that live inside of it to make everybody's life easier. So that's what we're going to cover today. Stick around. The Heiko FR300 desoldering gun was one of the first recommended purchases when I was looking and researching about pinball repair and restoration. And one of the key interesting things about using it is that it gives you a nice and easy uh, way of desoldering either items from uh, circuit boards as I use it primarily for. And you could also use it from, you know, from a pinball perspective under the play field, though I will say that it's probably not its most recommended approach. Now the great thing about the Heiko FR300 uh, is that you have the ability to not only do a lot of repair to it itself, uh, but you also have the ability to buy different tips. So one way I want to show you is how you go about changing those specific tips. Uh, you receive when you buy an FFR300 uh, a little uh, uh, nozzle changer here. And once you take the nozzle changer off, you then see you have the uh, tip it, 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 there we go. I have not cleaned this yet, uh, but you can see that you have the specific tip uh, that uh, that I've been using here recently. So uh, this tape is a, an N50-01, which is a 0.8 millimeter uh, tip. I'm going to put a, a bigger image right here with some other cool technical information. A 0.8 millimeter tip. Uh, in order to have that, this is where we're going to do a lot of uh, soldering with, with very small components. So if you're taking things off uh, like capacitors, uh, ICs, uh, you know, essentially a lot of board work, this is the tip that you'll need to buy. So just to note, that tip does not come with the Heiko FR300. This is about, uh, at, at last look, about a $300 device. The tips can be $25 to $30. Now, I will give you a, a quick top tip. If you're going to buy a specific nozzle, it's also important to have two things that go along with that nozzle. One is going to be this cleaning rod, and you probably are wondering why this is important. Well, one key thing is you're going to do is it will allow you to uh, get in here and clean out the specific tip. So you will get some residue of solder that is built into the tip. I actually can see some right now because I have not, like I said, I use this and then did not clean it like an adult that I am. So that allows you to, to clean that appropriately. Also, it will give you the ability to use, uh, that you want to buy is a, a specifically the drill bit, but you may want to also buy the drill holder. And again, if you have a situation where you have solder that is getting sucked through there, you want the ability to get that solder out. So this way you're just basically manually drilling into it to remove any solder residue that's left in the tip. So key things there just when you're talking about uh, tip maintenance. Uh, from, from that side. I do have other tips. I, I think the other uh, interesting tip to probably pick up if you're doing a lot, again, board work, is the N50-06. And this is a 1.6 millimeter tip. Now, a, a larger tip like this can be used for a variety of things. Uh, I, I use these primarily when changing up headers. Uh, you'll find that a larger tip uh, will go over that header and a 1.6 millimeter is about perfect for that. So this is a kind of a tip that I use for that. Um, working on power supply boards, anything where you may have something that's more hefty uh, and, and need something with a little bit larger opening. Again, the 1.6 millimeter from, from that side. And, and just like that perspective, I have in my little box an appropriate drill bit for 1.6 and an appropriate cleaning arm for 1.6 as well. So important to note here, there are some accessories after buying the base unit. But after you buy the base unit, there's a couple of key things as I, I'm going to uh, I'll just leave that apart for now. A couple of key things also you want to do from a repair perspective. You want to be able to understand that you have your soldering container department. This is where the solder, once it gets melted, uh, and it actually provides suction back into the, the reservoir, your solder goes into here. And there's a couple of key pieces. Uh, there's a, a little bit of a uh, cotton wick uh, to catch any fumes or other pieces of solder, and then a metal back plate uh, to do that. You can see here, uh, it's going to be hard to tell. I'll see if you can see into that. It's probably not working. 
uh, but it's very dirty right now. Uh, I'll just do the whole finger test so you can see that I, I've not cleaned this yet. So we'll walk through maybe how to do that as well. Uh, but you've got this ability here in terms of uh, cleaning and making sure that's up to date. You also have the ability to un, uh, unscrew this and take out look at any type of uh, issue with the suction or the vacuum portion to be able to make sure this hose is okay and everything is set up accordingly. So uh, again, continuing maintenance, preventive maintenance on these units are going to be very, very key to do. So I covered just some key basic parts of the Heiko 300. Uh, the last thing that I want to show is your temperature settings. So there are four different levels of temperature that's done by this dial here at the bottom. Uh, you may have seen in my other bi a video, I leave mine on between 1.5 and 2. Most people, what they'll do is they just crank it to 4, thinking, hey, you know, it's, you know, I need 930 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm just going to go ahead and do all my work. Not a problem. Um, I, I will tell you that um, um, too much temperature is going to give you a bad experience. So you really don't need anything outside of maybe, you know, like I said, one and a half. Uh, from, from that side, for especially the work that we're going to be doing. Now, uh, you know, the primary goal for this, as I mentioned, is going to be the ability to put a, a nozzle on here and then be able to then, you know, come in here, provide, uh, uh, melt the solder, provide suction to pull the solder out. So that removes us away from using, you know, uh, solder braid or solder wick. Um, it's still good to always keep this around. And again, I think I mentioned in the video, uh, always buy the better stuff uh, than the old like Radio Shack. Uh, Go, I think it's Go Kimco has got some good stuff. A lot of the more electronic suppliers will have the the better things out there to uh, to to buy as well. But we want to provide that heat here at the tip, pull in the solder into our reservoir, and then just boom, 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 boom. So that's why it has a gun a gun type of perspective. <coughs> So what I'll do here is I need to actually put on a new tip. I'm going to put on my 1.6 millimeter tip. Uh, I will add my nozzle back into here and I will get it to firmly, hopefully attach into place. This is me struggling. There we go. And now I have my tip in here into the casing for the gun. Uh, and now I have everything ready to go. Now I will say, uh, and I obviously do not have this plugged in, and it's also uh, nice and cool to the touch. But that's going to change in about two seconds because I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. Uh, there is an on-off button here in the back. And you'll see here, once it appropriately, you'll have a little amber light that will be lit. And then once it's up to temperature, that amber light will go out. Now you can also, uh, kind of as a quick check, if you walk by, I actually walk by this thing pretty constantly when I'm working my workshops. You can also just grab the handle and <laughs> grab the button to see if it's on. Obviously if it's on, you're gonna hear the vacuum. If not, uh, you, you're not going to hear it. I will also say that, you know, in terms of a con, uh, this is the little stand that Heiko gives you as part of buying the FR300, uh, gives you to hold the gun and it looks, uh, you know, something like this where you have the gun and you sit uh, just the, the, the gun into this little nozzle. I will tell you that this is not the greatest. I would rather have uh, something like a holster. Uh, you'll, you'll see people online have maybe like uh, one of those little solder uh, basins for a soldering iron and they'll just stick it in here like that. Uh, so that is, in my opinion, is much better than this. But I do use this. But just to let you know... This on a desk gets very wobbly and can fall off or touch things or wires uh, and, and kind of burn them. So just be careful that this is not um, really the greatest in terms of, it really needs to be about three inches higher to maybe have the gun more like this instead of being on a level playing field with the gun. So we've got our gun, uh, we've got it set up. It's not clean because I've got a little bit of work that I wanna do first and then we'll go ahead and clean it. But let's get to see this thing in action. So here's the problem that I want to fix. I have these headers right here. Um, these have been, it looks like, been worked on before. But all the, the pressure points, the pressure mountings on the other side have broken off. If you saw my Williams System 911 videos, you may have actually saw the confetti pop when I tried to plug in those uh, uh, specific connectors. I want to replace this, and I want to put new uh, pressure connectors back on here uh, just to uh, make sure that people won't put the... Uh, connector in wrong and also just to kind of also clean this up. So this is the work that I want to do but in order to start this work I want to be able to use the Heiko gun 
as you can see here again, here's all the loosey gooseyness here. But I want to use this Heiko gun to be able to actually come in here, uh, desolder this as good as possible, and then be able to pop it out and move from there. So back to the tripod. So let's get started. So what I'll do here is I just kind of wait for a moment. I'll see, I see the solder start to uh, uh, dissolve, well, basically warm up, heat up, and then I just hit the uh, vacuum button for a couple minutes. And you can see here, that was a, a really good one there. It really took out uh, a majority of the solder that was in that, uh, that solder blob there. <laughs> All right, so I went ahead and got that. Those last two didn't sound like it, it made a great suction there, but let's just see if I can rock this and it starts to pop out. I don't want to burn my hand in the process, so I'm going to use my cool, super new board turner here to bring this back up. And then let's rotate this. Oh, no. Too much stuff in the way. Oh man, that is a mess I just made. That's a mess. Okay, let's see if we can now pull these out. And you can see here, uh, this one was actually also broken and it seems to be coming out relatively simply. So there we go. There is what's left uh, of the uh, of the of the of the uh, connector. Uh, again, it was already broken. All the pressure relief is broken. You can see where they had really browned and burned. So this is this is no good. This is a, a throwaway. Now, from this point, the Heiko gun has done its job. Now we may want to come in here and take a look and see how the rest of the socket looks. So let me just slide out my camera. Let's come around here to the board, and now let's get a really a really good. Uh, a really good look here at our holes. You can see here we've got a couple holes that, that look like we've still got a little bit of solder. Now these are those last two that I did as well. So I want to be able to do here is come back with my come back here with my gun. Just kind of clean these up. There we go. So relatively clean holes. I'm gonna probably do a little alcohol, uh, a little alcohol, a little brush, just to kind of clean up these holes a bit more. But now we've got them ready to go. Man, look how bad those resistors look. Ugh. RIP the ceramic coating or um, carbon filter coating. Anyway, so the one thing that I want to mention here as I talk about these specific, the specific Heiko gun, is you can see that these are obviously specific eyelets for the hole, uh, for the, for the um, connector. You have to be careful with the FR300, especially when you get into more work in this area uh, with smaller connectivity, connection points. You have the ability to actually losing part of the eyelet, or part of that eyelet hole, when you're using the FR300. So it's very, very important to take your time, not use a lot of pressure. And the other thing you don't want to do as well is really put a lot of pressure into the board, as well as, as rocking back and forth and really trying to break it up. 
Um, it's more, it would be better to do that with uh, using a little bit of solder wick and your soldering iron if you're trying to break something free. If there's a little bit of solder just, you know, holding on to either that IC leg or that resistor leg, go that route than trying to brute force it with the FR300. So it's very important to note that. Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and let's put on our new, uh, our new uh, uh, connector. Now before anyone writes me, yes, I've been saying connector. And yes, these are header pins. So apologies for those out there who have been saying, no, Adam, it's they're header pins, not connectors. But you know what I was getting at. So I know here that I've got nine. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Come in here. Give us a quick cut. And now I have my connect my header pin. See, I'm even doing it now. Now, the one thing is I I I I I need to go and check is that I did have a specific pin that was a keyed pin. And I think it was pin number it's five. It's four and four, right? Yeah, it's four and four. So what I can do here is I'm going to go into here and I'm going ahead and keying this so that I won't have another individual who sees this at nine and, and, and feel like they can plug that in appropriately. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Just give that a snap. And there we go. Now I've got that keyed, ready to go and put in. Now from this point, I, I'm done with my Heiko uh, desoldering gun. All I need to do now is to slide in these pins on this side of the board and then solder away. All right, now we are good to go. So with the use of the Heiko FR300, I've now been able to change out this connector. I now have a brand new connector right here uh, now that, that, that has new pins or a new header without the, the, pressure, the pressure as well. So now when a uh, user who uses this or someone who does the operation, they now they're getting a new one. Uh, for those in the Bally early solid state world where I've worked on other machines, again, the Heiko FR300, important here, obviously the if you're doing the dot one, uh, the, the, the dot one pitch headers, you can use a smaller nozzle than the 1.6 that I used here uh, since these are 0.56. And actually, I think the 0.8 millimeter or the 1.0 millimeter will work for that. So let's just wrap up here, talk a little bit more about the FR300. So what do I think of the FR300? Um, again, I think, you know, its pros are really, you know, limitless uh, in terms of just, you know, consistency of work, uh, in terms of um, um, efficiency of doing, uh, removing, uh, you know, components from a board. This works great. Um, I've been really happy with this purchase. And for those who may be watching this video and have not, uh, do not have one of these, there is a new Heiko FR301. And there are some different changes just to, to mention about that. Uh, there is a new solder catching type of uh, uh, mechanism that exists in that that's supposed to stop uh, any buildup or residue being left where you need a lot more cleaning. Uh, there is a new tip structure for those. So if you're looking about buying an FR301, make sure to check out and find the, the, the tips that are similar in terms of the, the, the dot millimeter pitch uh, from, from the tips that I was showing here in this video. I would absolutely pick one of these up. I, I, I don't know if you do any type of board work or even have the possibility of doing board work in the future. This is just a, almost a must have. Um, I've been just, I, I've used the heck out of it. I've taken it to friends. I've taken it to uh, on location, uh, working with friends, fixing pinball machines or pulling things out. If you ever plan on doing NV RAM work, this is another good key piece. I'd say the only con uh, with the FR300 or the 301 if you're using it is it has the tendency of being a little aggressive. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is the FR300 will sometimes uh, could potentially cause more board damage. Uh, so there's been many times when I've learned with this device where I've lost eyelets or I've broken off components or 
uh, you know, I, I've been too aggressive in terms of the actual digging into a board and doing something like that, like I showed earlier. So I, I would definitely uh, encourage you, if you decide to pick one of these up, buy a untested board or a board off eBay, that $10, $15 board, and practice. Uh, don't go and buy this and then pull out a WPC uh, board and just expect to be a master at it. Um, earlier boards uh, that, that have uh, wider traces and, and, and components that are a little bit more farther apart, there, that's where you want to really kind of get into and start testing. And then move your way, move your way into especially those 90s machines like the Bally Williams machines. Uh, those board sets are, are much more compact. Traces are all over the place. And these can cause havoc if you don't know what you're doing appropriately. But in terms of the price point, it's a little expensive. But again, I mean, the amount of time that I have saved by using this instead of just using Solderwick and trying to pull pieces off the board, um, it's just, it's unquestionable just how easy this makes my life as long as I take my time to be. So FR300, great device. Definitely feel free to pick one up. If you have one of these devices, uh, comment below. Let me know if you like yours. And if you have any other specific tips about this device, uh, either it's tips about the device or device or comments about the tips, uh, leave them below. I'd be really happy to hear about how other people are using their FR300s or other similar desoldering stations that exist. And uh, maybe some tips or tricks that you have from that that we can add to the video later. So with that, that's going to do us for Pinball Workshop. We'll see you later. This is really hot. I don't, I almost touched it. And you, you almost saw that happen. Don't, don't touch that. It's, it's not good.